Hi, it's Mike again. I think I might go back to doing written blogging. I started to do these video blogs because I just didn't have time to do the writing or to give it the attention I needed. And now I'm finding it hard to find time to do the video blogs, but at least I can do it when I'm walking in my routine hikes. Here at sunset on what's called West Beach in Fidalgo Island. So I was doing a series of apologetics and I talked about uh, uh, several issues, social issues at first, being a pl pluralistic society and that's what makes it hard to have faith just because you're exposed to so many decent, good people who have radically different views than you. That's a, a big challenge in today's society. Then I talked about psychological factors, I think was part two. But this third part and last part, I want to talk about what most people focus on when they talk about Christian apologetics, and that's on the side of reason. And I just want to make some very simple statements, and it just doesn't have to be complex at all is that reason, the way that you look at reason has a lot to do with how you believe and, and the lack of belief. There are several wrong views of reason when it comes to Christianity. And I'm going to talk about those and then talk about what I think is the more biblical view. One belief of, or one view of reason I borrow from Aristotle, or I don't borrow, I think society borrows it from Aristotle. And I won't blame him completely on this because a lot of it has to do with what later philosophers did with his ideas. But it's a kind of reason or belief that taking what your senses, your central perceptions, and using your mind and using logic to reason through this, you can arrive at truth 100% of the time. This was the fuel to the Enlightenment and all the wonderful things that happened in the Enlightenment. But then it was also to blame for how we arrived at God is dead viewpoint. It's very simple. If the way you arrive at truth or, or absolute truth is through your senses, then therefore God is not a real central experience as far as touching, feeling, talking, and therefore, the philosophers of the 17th, 18th, 19th centuries reached the conclusion that if you can't smell God, talk to God, feel God, then God is not there. And that was the foundation of modern atheism. It's based on this fallacy in reason. Now, the second extreme is what a lot of Christians have done over the years, and I'm talking about centuries and even millennial, and that's, look at reason as inferior, part of this material, inferior world. And if reason's part of the brain and part of this inferior world, it's meaningless in that system. And the only thing that counts is faith. But faith becomes a blind, irrational leap into the dark. The problem with that way of approaching spirituality is... It, if, if I want to have faith that Christianity is true and it's built completely on this type of anti-rational belief system, then there's absolutely no reason the same faith cannot lead me to believe wholeheartedly that I'm really a cucumber. So when it's irrational, it's baseless and meaningless. So if people put up a facade that it has meaning and they have for hundreds of years, and they still do, especially in evangelicalism, parts of it, the more, I guess, more experienced parts of evangelicalism, where faith is seen as the antithesis to reason, and therefore much better. So the last part is what I think is the biblical foundation of looking at this, and that is simply, God in his great wisdom created all that is out of nothing. So everything that we see in this world, and I'll show you what I'm looking at right now, all of this is God's stuff. It was created by God outside of himself. And before he created it, there was absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. And he created us human beings 
with brains, a material brain that has tremendous value and reason and logic. And I do believe most likely that before the fall of Adam, you could reach perfect truth every time using, well, basically what Aristotle said, using your senses and your reason. But then the Christian story is unique that it describes how there was a great fall upon this universe. And we're fallen, or in a fallen state. Therefore, our reason is fallen. Uh, we're fallen spiritually, we're fallen morally. No question about that. But because our reason is fallen, then therefore it cannot be like the Aristotle reason today. We cannot find and know God is there with certainty based on our reason. And we cannot know that God is there with certain based on a blind faith into nothing. So we're really left the appropriate view as fallen human beings at a place of uncertainty. And that's a great breakthrough when it comes to doubt and apologetics that we have to start with this point of uncertainty. And I was taught my entire Christian life that if you're uncertain, you've lost. I'm saying that when you reach the point of this type of healthy biblical uncertainty, you've won. That's the starting point. So that ends this, this little three-part series on apologetics and uh, doubt. I expound, we'll expound on this more later, and maybe I'll go back to writing. I don't know who <laughs> or what people prefer, video or writing.